a service of CNC Worldwide. The Daily is a service of CNC News and Jib Jab Greetings. I'm Bud Lowell. Your full AccuWeather forecast is up on top right here on your CNC local news pages. Simulated fire, simulated disaster, simulated casualties, the key word simulated, a drill was conducted at the Greater Rochester International Airport Saturday morning. About 150 people volunteered to participate in the drill, playing uh, the part of victims in an aircraft disaster. EMS fire and rescue personnel from community departments and area hospitals, Strong Memorial, Highland Hospital, Unity, and Lakeside in Brockport participated. For those of you who saw emergency equipment from 390 as you were driving by the airport on Saturday, that's what was going on. Parts of the exercise were out on the tarmac as well as in the airport terminal. And folks, it was just a drill. In Brighton, contractors have the 590 Winton Road interchange area closed again on Saturday. They're doing construction for the diverging diamond interchange, which opened uh, earlier in the week. More finishing work is going to be done on this uh, clear through the construction season and the job is expected to be done sometime in October. Again, that intersection, the diverging diamond 590 and Winton Road closed in the town of Brighton. It should reopen sometime Saturday night. After twice postponing the sale of its patent assets, Eastman Kodak has petitioned the U.S. District Bankruptcy Court to put the legal process of the sale on indefinite hold. Kodak's attorneys filed a brief with the court in Manhattan asking to adjourn a formal sale hearing until further notice. Court papers say Kodak has been engaged in extensive ongoing negotiations of a potential sale and licensing transaction with respect to the digital imaging patent assets. If the deal for the assignment or licensing is concluded, the debtors anticipate filing and serving a supplemental motion consistent with the terms of the conditional sale order. And that's a quote. Kodak says it's also exploring other alternatives to actually selling its library of digital imaging patents. Court papers say one of those options would be to set up a new licensing company that would own the patents and license their use to interested high-tech companies. The proceeds, of course, would go to pay off the creditors in Kodak's Chapter 11 bankruptcy case. As has been reported by numerous tech industry blogs by the Wall Street Journal and Bloomberg, the issue holding up Kodak's asset sale has been that the marketplace apparently thinks Kodak's patents aren't worth as much as Kodak expected to make from selling them. The company was counting on revenues from sale of those digital imaging patents to fund its recovery and reorganization. The State University College at Geneseo has pulled the plug on its women's volleyball team for the season after all but one member of the team took part in an underage drinking party earlier this month. SUNY Geneseo announced on Friday that the 2012 intercollegiate volleyball season is canceled because of what happened at the unauthorized team initiation party on September 2nd. Police in the village of Geneseo have charged some of the women with hazing and alcohol-related offenses after one freshman ended up in the hospital. It apparently involved blindfolding and drinking alcohol. The full statement can be read on the SUNY College website along with a statement from SUNY President Christopher Dahl. And a Monroe County Jail deputy has been accused of raping female inmates at the county correctional facility in Brighton. The accused deputy is 41-year-old Robert Wilson. He's a 17-year veteran of the Sheriff's Department. He's been assigned to the correctional facility for two years. Wilson is now charged with two counts of rape, one count of patronizing a prostitute, one count of a criminal sexual act, 12 counts of sexual abuse, and seven of official misconduct. He is suspended without pay. He made bail and was released after pleading not guilty on Friday. Monroe County Sheriff Patrick O'Flynn calls this an embarrassment to his office. He says Wilson was a supervisor at the correctional facility and used his access to take inmates to unsecured areas of the center where some of these incidents happened. The sheriff says other deputies noticed unusual activity on some of the correctional facility's computers. Wilson's alleged activities came to light, and he says evidence recorded by video cameras at the jail will be part of the case. Elsewhere on this CNC News page, you can find links to these and other stories. And at the bottom in the gray bar, links that you can use post us, news updates, things you'd like us to check out. 
sports stories, business openings, any of that sort of thing. There's categories for it. We want to know about it, and we'd like to see it up here on CNC News and let the community know about it as well. Next news as it happens, updates when necessary. And I'm Bud Lowell, CNC News.